again and we use the ones that are new here I like you to just like and sub or subscribe to the channel if you like the content leave me a leave me a message let me know what you like to hear from but today we're going to be talking about prayer now you've heard it preached a thousand different times so today is not going to be a sermon about prayer it's going to be the actual teaching of praying the Bible tells us that we have have not because we ask not and then we ask amiss uh, or we don't know how to pray after 18 years of being in the ministry holding every title from deacon to a pa assistant pastor I realized that in no church would I ever connected to they have a class teaching people how to pray <laughs> but every time you turn around, you hear them saying, you got to pray, you got to pray, you got to pray. You gotta. So if you don't know what, how to pray, what is prayer going to do for you? Well, this is how, after, after those time, all, all that time, I finally realized that it was time for somebody to tell the new people and some of you older people what how prayer is truly consists of. Um, so, now... To start off our conversation, I want to make it clear that prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. Dialogue meaning between two people. Monologue meaning a single conversation, person. Monologue, dialogue. Okay? The reason why prayer is considered a dialogue it's because you are talking to Christ or the Jesus, uh, God, and he will speak back to you. Okay? He will speak back to you. And you may not realize it right now, but he will speak back to you. <laughs> Believe me. Um, and you will know his voice after a while. Uh, the thing about prayer is this. The Bible tells us, first of all, that the only way to the Father is through the Son. That tells us that there's some structure in praying. That there's a way to get to Him that He'll listen to you. So, with that being said, when you hear a person praying, and it's two types of prayers. When you hear somebody praying in the church in, in, or tabernacle or wherever you might be at, it's called a corporate prayer. Corporate prayer. That's when you're praying with a group of people. And it's an individual prayer, a private prayer. Okay? Now, either one of those prayers can turn into a form of worshiping, but it starts out as prayer. Um, now, in corporate prayer, or any prayer, um, you'll hear people open up when they first start talking. They'll say uh, something to the effect of Father God in the name of Jesus. The reason why they say that is because they respect the fact that the only way to the Father is via the Son. So you have to acknowledge the Son while going to the Father. Because because of his Jesus died, it gave us access to God. He's our in-between person. He stands in between us and God when it comes to prayer. So you'll hear them say, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So when you pray, acknowledge the Son, that you're coming to the Father via the Son to get to the head, man, to get to God. Okay? Um, that's the first thing, structure. Now, the second thing you want to know about prayer is that you have different types of prayer, like I said before, individual prayer and corporate prayer. But in either case, prayer has a structure and it follows these lines. When you first go to God, you don't go to God asking for something. 
<laughs> like you would say, God, or you would go to your mom and say, hey, mom, let me have 20 bucks. Well, you might, but <laughs> you shouldn't. Usually, you go in there and you say, hey, mom, how are you doing today? Thanks. You know, I, I love you, blah, blah, blah. Can I borrow 20 bucks? Well, you do the same thing with God. You go to God, you don't ask for something at the beginning. You first step to go to God. And in most cases, I like to go to God with thanksgiving. Lord, today I want to thank you for what you've already done. See, because we have to tell God, thank you. Lord, I know you've done so much for me already. You've you got food over in you to eat, a roof over your head, clothes on your back. He's already done so much for you. So you go to God with thanks first. Okay? So after acknowledging the Son to the Father, then you go to God with thanksgiving. Lord, thank you today. The next part of prayer is asking God for forgiveness. Because you want to go to God with a clean heart and clean hands. So God, forgive me. If I did this, if I did something wrong, I wasn't supposed to do. If I said something or, 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 or did something from yesterday or this morning that wasn't in your will, Lord, forgive me right now. This gives you cleanliness with God. This is okay. I, I acknowledge who you are. I thank you for what you've done. And I'm asking you to clean me up first of all. Before I go to you for anything else, I'm saying, Lord, give me clean hands. So these three, these three parts have just moved everything out of the way. This gives you the opening to now say, okay, God. Now, here's my petition. This is what I'm here for. Because a lot of times you go to God and, and, and we go to God under just situations uh, with issues and things like that. And God wants to hear it all. So you, when you go to God with that stressful situation, now God, now you told God, thank you. You told God you, you believe in his hierarchy. Now you told God, here I am. Clean me up. For my sins, what I don't even know, clean me up for my sins. Now is the opportunity you get to say, well, God, can I have? Or, God, here is my petition for this day. Um, and once you get to that place, you know, whatever you're praying for that day is, um, is what you're praying for. You can pray five hours or five minutes. They have the same strength if you are pure at heart with your prayers. Now, what you also want to understand is that when praying to God, He wants to hear everything. This is your time to build your relationship with God. So many times in church, they stress religion. Inside the apostles, of Jesus ministries we stress relationship your religion is a thing that you do the protocol that you follow that's protocol relationship gives you access to God if I have a relationship with a woman I want to show that woman how I love her I want to show her that I want to spend time with her. I want to be there. I want to love her. I want to take time with her. That's what we stress at the Apostles of Christ Ministries. I mean, we, we want to stress the fact that you build your relationship with God through the time you spend with Him. So the time you spend in prayer is a time you get to open up and release. Uh, some people pray and they forget certain things. And I, I've, I've done it before. I, you go into prayer and then you say, well, you come out and say, man, I meant to pray about this. Well, what I want to tell you is it's okay. If you forget it, you go back. If you want to, if you just want to release it, you go back and you, God, in the name of Jesus, let me tell you this. It's no limit on how long to pray it's, or how short to pray. You can pray a five-minute prayer and it moves things. You can pray a five-hour prayer and it's going to move things. It's your relationship with God. And understanding that your prayers will become more involved 
as you get deeper and deeper into Christ. Because you know that the Bible tells us, lay your cares on me, for I care for you. See, once you get saved, you no longer can just give a person a piece of your mind. <laughs> and then after a few years, you ain't got much mind after give them. <laughs> anyway, anyway. But you want to make sure that you get it off your chest. Because you don't want to harbor her heart feelings. You don't want to harbor anger, frustration. You don't want to harbor those things when it comes to God. Because what will happen is, while you're harboring all those bad feelings, you harbor all those things, you can't get a clear uh, visual of what God wants from you. And this is one of the problems that we have. We store up so much stuff, and then we can't see, God can't see us, or can't talk to us through all of the understanding how God is, who God is in your life can give you the, the, the point of contact that you need to reach the places that you want or the goals in your life. Understand, God called us to do certain works, but most of all, he wants to have a relationship with you. Uh, a lot of people fail to understand one thing that we believe here is that the church is in you. The building we gather at, that's a place that we go to communicate together as a group. But the church is really inside of you. Take your time. Learn to pray. Build a relationship with Christ. Build a relationship of love, mutual respect, and understanding. Once you build that relationship, and the more you build that relationship, the more you'll grow with Christ. You understand, a lot of times I've gone into prayer, and I've done it many times before. I'll take a prayer request, or I'll, I'll, I'll talk to someone about prayer, and I'll write that thing down. And when I go into prayer, I literally take my time praying, and I make sure I pray for that person, or I pray for that thing. Because a lot of times you pray and you forget. You may not pray about, you forget. <laughs> you can be in prayer an hour, two hours, and realize, wait a minute, I forgot to pray about this. Well, take if, if you're new and you're going into prayer, take your time. Pray about that thing. Write it down. Take it to your prayer room. And when you get ready to pray, start praying. Get everything set up. And when you get to talk about that thing, pray for that. You know, pray for it, everything. If you have any strong goals in your life, if you have any issues in your, in your life, anything and everything in your life, pray about it. God wants to hear it. He'll help you and he'll hold you up. I'm Calvin. This is Calvin Kitchen. I hope to see you come back again. And don't forget, like, subscribe, leave me a comment.